the WSH uh, DOM and COM, right? And with working with class objects. Okay. So first, what we will do is we will take a WSH. Okay. WSH stands for Windows Script Host. WSH stands for Windows Script Host. And what is mean by this Windows script host? What are the things that we can do? See, in certain situations, what happens is you may not be able to send the values directly to the application. You may need to deal with shortcut keys on top. Okay, you may need to deal with shortcut keys. Or when you are working with some applications, right? What you have to do is uh, you after entering the value manually you have to press tab out. If you press tab out, then only it will take the value. If you don't press tab out, value will not be constant. Generally, we get uh, like you know, in people's arms or this kind of application, you will get this. Getting what I'm saying here? So, in such cases, tool doesn't have any method, automation tool that whatever you use may not be having a method. To press a tab out after setting the value, after the, uh, entering the value into that. Manually from the keyboard, you need to press the tab key. But manually, in a sense, okay, I go, I will not be there and then uh, press the tab. What we have to do, we need to write a program which will be, which will uh, send the or which will press the tab key from the keyboard. So that means when you want to perform the operations from the keyboard directly, not by tool events. Tool will have some events and all, some methods and all. Not by tool methods, maybe from the keyboard it has to take the inputs and all. Then how do we set the inputs from keyboard directly? Maybe you need to deal with shortcut keys or you may need to deal with some uh, function keys, special keys like this. You may need to press enter, you may need to press tab out or you may need to send some uh, function keys. Okay, F1, F2, all those are function keys. Right? Or you may need to on tabs log automatically, you may need to press face down, face up, or you may need to scroll left or right, uh, right all these things. So to deal with all this kind of keys or shortcut keys and all, then we use WSH. That's one part. And at the same time, there is one more here. So far we are using message box. But one, one of the drawbacks of message box is it will remain open till user process. So it will not move to the next slide. But instead of that, what I need is I want to display a pop-up still. I want to display a pop-up. But if I don't close the pop-up, that should be closed automatically in five seconds. Or that should be automatically closed in ten seconds. So in such cases, you know, to display a pop-up which closes automatically in certain period of time, you can use WSG. Okay, and at the same time, sometimes what happens is some of the methods will, you know, some of the events and all will be performed only when the application key is in active mode. That means there could be three or four applications might be open in your uh, desktop, uh, but the application what you are working on might be behind some other application. Okay. So the application is hiding behind some other application. Application is open, but it's hiding, you know, uh, behind other application. So what you want to do is, if you want to bring this application, whatever the application that you want to work with, if you want to bring that application to the front, into the focus state, then you can use WSH. Okay. And at the same time, probably what we need is we may need to. Uh, deal with the registries. You know what is going by system registry? System registry and all will be there. R is the editor. Okay, so all these are system registries. Every application that you have installed in the system then will have some registries. So things like the information and all will be there in the registries. So if you want to check the registries, whether registry key has been created or if you want to uh, write, create a new registry key or if you want to update the value of a registry, 
then you can use W S H. Okay. And at the same time, there are few things called environment variables at system level. Whenever you are passing the values from one application to another application, or when you are defining variable at system level, not at the script level, system level, so that any other program or any other applications can access those parameters. Where those parameters will be system level parameters. Right click. If you go to the system properties. And in the system properties, advanced settings, you can see environment variables under advanced tab. All these are the system level properties that we have here. So you can access from any of the application. You can access from any of the applications. Those properties. So if you want to deal with such kind of properties, you may need to create a new parameter. Not property, it's a parameter. So Create a new parameter and store the value in the uh, system level parameter, or check a parameter exists or not, or check retrieve the value of the uh, retrieve the value of the parameter, whatever the parameter is. All these things, system level parameter. So to deal with the system parameters, then we use W S H. Or sometimes you may need to run some applications. You may need to execute some exe files. Or you may need to open some uh, files. Which uh, now let's say a text file is there. When I want to, I want to display the text file. But when it's a open text file, it will not display. It will internally open it and then do for reading or writing purpose. We don't see the text file. But what I have to do is I want to open that file here. When I want to open that file, then you need to run that txt file. When you run the txt file, it will get to open. Not only that. Sometimes I may need to run some installable applications, .exe files or some .vbs files or some uh, .batch files and all. I may need to run. Or sometimes I may need to run some .dog commands and all. So if you want to run those files or if you want to run the commands from command prompt and all, then we use .wsh. So all these purposes will be, or uh, you know. Uh, all whatever I have done, all these functionalities will be given by WSH with the script host. Then, if you want to deal with the WSH, this you know we need to create one object that's called a shell Windows shell object. Okay, Windows shell it is not the shell. Shell scripting is different, something different, but it is Windows shell. You call it as. Then, how do you create the Windows shell object? Say set O W S H equal to create object of W script dot cell. That's it. Okay, W script dot cell. So first, you need to create Windows shell object. Then you can access all the methods. We will see some today and then some tomorrow. So I told that first thing is pop up. I want to display a pop-up which closes automatically in five seconds. Then do one thing. Say whatever the WSH that you have created, take the WSH and for WSH you have got a method called pop-up. Then you can see that text seconds to wait. Then I will give some text sample pop-up. Say. Five. I'm giving five. Five seconds. It is. Save this. I'm going a little fast now, but tomorrow we will discuss in detail. We displayed the pop-up sample pop-up. You can change the title. Okay, so title is showing the W script close, but you can change the title. Now I didn't take any action; it's closed automatically after five seconds, right? So if you want to display suddenly, sometimes you know when you are installing the application, suddenly what happens? Uh, some pop-up will just blink and then will close automatically, right? So all these kind of pop-ups are given by WSH. Remember that this shell object, W script that shell object, not just in a VB script. You can access from .NET or all this. Okay. Then similarly, 
if you want to run an application okay 